Never I gate shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. But the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish, yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together, to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despised thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet, and they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, but no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles, and shalt suck the breast of kings, and thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. For brass I will bring gold, and for iron I will bring silver, and for wood brass, and for stones iron. I will also make thy officers peace, and thine exactors righteousness. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation, and thy gates praise. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shah, Bahashem, Kapadash, double honors unto the apostles and the elders of GMS who rule well, teach well, being great examples to his younger brothers, and peace and blessing, salutations, and hopefully they got there pushing his word and truth and in sincerity across the four winds in the name of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shah, pushing to get up out of here, Shalom, to the hopeful late. To the believers and listeners who may have came back to the obedience of the scriptures through faith in you, how about Shema Al Shai? All right, and um, what I want to get into tonight, you know, just a continuation, you know, the book of Tobit. All right, we're in the third chapter, you know, we're just going to, you know, read, you know, in the spirit, you know, when the Lord will, you know, this is edifying, you know, going back to Tobit, you know, which is one of, you know, our forefathers from, you know, the, um, the tribe of Naphtali of the Northern Kingdom. You know, we went into captivity, you know, and there's a lot of, you know, points, you know, within, you know, this book, you know, that we can relate to within our captivity, you know. So, <clears throat> oh, 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 no further ado, like I said, we'll get straight into it. Uh, yep, so let's get into it, Tobit, the third chapter. All right, so this is the book of Tobit. Chapter 3, verse 1. Okay. Now this is how the Tobit, you know, he was he was blind. 
Okay, he was blinded by the um the dawn, you know, from a sparrow landed in his eye. You know, he was he was blinded. Um, you know, he lost pretty much everything, you know, except his wife and his son. His wife, you know, had to go to work and, and, and pretty much make do, you know, make ends meet, you know. So now he's in the spirit, you know, pretty much almost like a Job, you know, we're gonna, you know, see, you know, he pretty much you know, like damn, <laughs> you know, like I'm finished, I'm through. You know, he's he he's he's praying, you know, within his grief. <laughs> okay. Which we can all attest, you know, to being in grief and just praying to the Lord, like, you know, just you know, just end this thing. <laughs> you know, just just do something, you know. And this is Tobit, you know, within his state of grief. Now, this is the book of Tobit, chapter three, verse one. It says, Then I being grieved, did weep, and then my sorrow prayed. Okay, so he's been going to a prayer. It says, saying, O Lord, thou art just in all thy works, and all thy ways are mercy and truth, and thou judgest truly and justly forever. Remember me and look on me, punish me for my for my sins and ignorance, and the sins of my fathers who have sinned right before us. For they obey not the commandments, wherefore thou hast delivered us for a spoil and unto captivity, unto death, and for a proverb of a reproach to all the nations among whom we are dispersed. You know, so he's praying and, you know, he's in the spirit. You know, he's speaking of, you know, him being punished for his sins, the sins of, you know, his forefathers. <laughs> okay. Which, hey, that's all throughout the scriptures, you know, because going back to their first covenant, which we break, all right, there was a punishment, okay, for that, you know, and Daniel, when he was grieved in the spirit, you know, he spoke, you know, of that time. So let's go here to the book of Daniel, all right, let's pause here. So let's get um the book of Daniel. The uh the ninth chapter. All right, and a lot of our forefathers, you know, they would speak, you know, in, in in their grief, you know, which we know Daniel, you know, he was a captive, you know, in Babylon, you know, Tobit, you know, was a, a captive in um Assyria. Okay. So you have, you know, the northern, <laughs> you know, our forefather of the northern kingdoms, then our forefather of you know the southern kingdom you know daniel you know the, from the line of judah okay um so let's get this in the book of daniel all right chapter nine you know and what is this is it daniel's prayer for his people <laughs> okay you know our forefathers will you know they will make you know intercession you know for, on behalf of the people all right so let's start here this is Daniel 9 and 9 it says to the Lord our power belong mercies and forgiveness. So, you know, they're making, you know, intercession for Jake, you know, and you know, our forefathers would be in grief, but they would always, you know, remember to be <laughs> in order, you know, with their complaint. You know, so you see Justice Tobit, you know, Daniel is beginning, you know, he's going into his prayer, okay, um, uh giving reverence to Yahweh Bashim al Shai, all right. It said to the it said to the Lord our power belong mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. And see, one thing about the truth, you know, we had come to grasp to where we have to have self accountability. <laughs> you know, like really when we examine, you know, everything that we did before we came in the truth, like damn, you know, we should come to the conclusion like we need mercy, you know. And we should, you know, have awareness of self accountability, even while we're in the truth. You know, that's why scriptures continue to say, examine thyself. Okay? Because self accountability is a major factor, you know, of coming into true repentance, man. Okay? And it says, reading on, it says, neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our power to walk in his laws 
which he said before us by his servants the prophets because he daniel is including himself in it because he knows he's not perfect you know he know that he you know he he, he was known to be scripture say he had an excellent spirit you know and he was of integrity but he knows that he wasn't perfected you know so he knows that he's short of the glory of Yahweh by shim outside the perfection <laughs> you know no one can be on the high horse within this ministry man you know we all have to really have self-accountability and, and, and constantly self-examine verse 11 says yeah all israel have transgressed thy law even by departing that they might not obey thy voice therefore the curse is poured out upon us and the oath that is written in the law of moses okay going to do around 28 man <clears throat> there's an oath that was written in the law of moses the servant of the most high because we have sinned against him okay and he have confirmed his words which he spake against us and against our judges and judged us by bringing upon us in a great evil for under the whole heaven have not been done as have been done upon jerusalem okay speaking of captivities man okay and even this latter captivity that we're in this time all right this has been a horrific all right captivity for our people you know and this is the hit her most horrific captivity a nation ever has ever been in man okay but this is all the anger of the lord for our disobedience okay let's go from there let's get um let's get that in michael the seventh chapter you know and just getting examples you know of self accountability you know it's toby like he know like damn and you know, he told me it was charitable but he know like he wasn't perfect <laughs> you know so anything that happened you know the lord justified him doing it you know there's the book of Michael, chapter 7, verse 9. It says, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. Okay? And that's, you know, when we first come in the truth, like a lot of that zeal, you know, come from that guilt, you know, that we have of all the things that we were doing that was off. <laughs> you know, so you, you know, you get to be extremely zealous, you know, because you feel played, you know, then you feel that guilt, you know, so you, you know everything you know we do when we first come in a lot of times it'd be over exaggerated you know it is as i said it goes back to that guilt now it's uh michael 7 and 9 it says and i will bear the in the nation of the lord because i have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me he will bring me forth to the light and i shall behold his righteousness okay so we understand even right now day to day that we're constantly bearing the indignation of the lord man in the nation of the lord you know we're still subject to payments you know even the truth but guess what we're still subject to payments we're still subject with the vexation of this world okay we still gotta you know look at the, the filth of this world and you know there's nothing we can do about it that's part of the indignation of the lord you know the sons of God being powerless, that's part of the Lord's indignation, man. You see? So until the Lord pleads our cause, you know, we have to bear the Lord's indignation, man. When certain things happen, you know, the things that we go through, the chastisement, the, you know, the, 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 the you know, the setbacks, the betrayals, all these things are in the nation of the Lord, man. <laughs> you know, still upon us, man, but we know we come to a time where the Lord is going to plead our cause and execute judgment on our behalf, man. You know, and he says he will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. OK, and we're being brought forth to the light of righteousness, man. You know, all the way into the time where Yahweh Shai is going to be revealed himself, man. You know, it's a constant increase. You know within this light as we're in this truth you know until we get to the point of seeing you how shot man hey <laughs> you see so let's go from there um 
you know, because Daniel, I mean, because of October, you know, he had, he had a contrite heart, man. Let's get there real quick in the book of Psalms. Let's book of Psalms. All right. Psalms 51 and All right, Psalms 51 and 16. It says, For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of the Most High are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O power, thou wilt not despise. Okay? That's what the Lord is dealing with. Like, he, we had to be broken. <laughs> you see, this captivity was meant to break us, man. Okay? And we heard this word, you know, like we, we was meant to be broken. Okay? That godly sorrow the scriptures, you know, speak of, man. You see, and that's what the Lord is dealing with. Those that are, that are sorrowful for disobedience, man. Okay? It says, oh, power thou will not despise, man. <laughs> you know, because, hey, when you're broken, you're going to be extremely humble. And you're going to be extremely willing to listen to correction man when you when you're in the state of being broken you know speaking from experience okay so let's go let's go from there all right let's get back to toby Back in Toby, the third chapter, verse 5, it says, And now thy judgments are many and true. Deal with me according to my sins and my fathers, because we have not kept the commandments, neither have we walked in truth before thee. Now, therefore, deal with me as seemeth best unto thee, and command my spirit to be taken from me. That I may be dissolved and become earth, for it is profitable for me to die. So now he's even requesting the death. It says, rather than to live, because I have heard false reproaches and have much sorrow. All right, command therefore that I may now be delivered out of this distress and go into the everlasting place of the spiritual realm. Turn not thy face um, away from me. Okay. So <laughs> he's to the point he catching so much hell. He like look, he was questioning a death man. <laughs> you know, just like uh, when you go to Job. Let's get that in Job. All right, that's the book of Job, chapter three. Okay, this is Job three, and. Yep, and pretty much uh, Job, you know, requesting, you know, to be taken out. This is the book of Job, chapter 3, verse 12. It said, why did the knees prevent me, or why the breast that I should suck? <laughs> okay, for now I should have lain still and been quiet. I should have slept. Then had I been at rest. Okay. <laughs> In verse 11, it said, why did I not... It says, why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Okay, so Joe was catching that hell and he to the point where he requested, you know, a death, man. <laughs> okay, Jake was under distress. Okay, so let's go back to Tobit. <laughs> yeah, hey, the Mosai can, he, hey, Mosai take you there, man. <laughs> you know, you can, it's a terrible power. What the hell is this, man? Oh. You know, but he chasing, you know, whom he love. Okay. Now this is um back in the book of Tobit, chapter three, verse seven. It says, It came to pass 
the same day that in Ekbatani, a city of media, Sarah, the daughter of Ragu, was also uh, was also reproached by her father's maid. So now, okay, we we is going to Sarah. Okay, he went to Tobit. Okay, he you know put up his prayers, and now we into Sarah. Okay. Which is the woman that eventually Tobias is going to marry, you know? But now she's going to go into her prayers, all right? And it's going to go to her, you know, <laughs> her circumstances, her situation where she had gone. He said because that she had been married to seven husbands, whom Almadius, the evil spirit, all right, a demon, had killed before they had lined with her. Those thou not know, said they. That thou hast strangled thy husband, you know, Jake. <laughs> yeah, you know, Jake making rumors, you know, the servants. He said, Thou hast already seven husbands, neither was thy name after any of them, you know, because they didn't get to, you know, consummate the marriage. You know, they had <laughs> demon were put in the death. Wherefore, those thou beat us for them, <laughs> you know, she probably hard on them, you know. So they <laughs> Yeah, damn, you know how Jake do, man. Take a story and run with it, okay? It says, if they be dead, go thy ways after them. <laughs> you know, so they like, see, you should go to the spirit world with them, okay? He said, let us never see of thee either son or daughter. Like, damn, so they were going hard on it. Like, don't you, you know, it's good that you're not having children, <laughs> you know? It said, when she heard these things, she was very sorrowful. So that she thought to have strangled herself, all right? She's thinking about hey, <laughs> taking herself out, you know? Because as a woman, you know, it was extremely important. See, we live in a society now where marriage is just, you know, an option, you know, for a woman. You know, women just, just float around, you know, just, just, you know, float around and be, you know, pretty much whatever they want to be, you know, go through all these phases and be everything, you know, but a wife, you know, but our foremothers, they took it, they took it very seriously to become a wife and bear children, man, which was the Lord's intent, okay, we're going to get it, says, and she said, I am the only daughter of my father, and if I do this, it shall be a reproach unto him, speaking of killing herself, and I shall bring his old age with sorrow unto the grave, Okay, so now let's go. And finish reading says, Now, O Lord, I set my eyes and my face toward thee, and I say, Take me out of the earth that I may hear no more the reproach. Thou knowest, Lord, that I am pure from all sin with men, which she never knew men. Now, she never, you know, lay with the men. She was still a virgin. Now, let's go here just to show you, <laughs> okay? We go to our former mother, Rachel. All right, come on, man. Let's All right, so you go here to our full mother, Rachel, in the book of Genesis. And let's go to Genesis. Yeah, Genesis 30. <laughs> okay. Now, this is before, you know, Rachel had any children, but her, her sister Leah, you know, were having children, okay? And it says, and when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, in Genesis 30 and 1, it says, when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, oh, man, come on, man. Hold on. All right. 
read it again. This is Genesis 31. It says, And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. <laughs> okay, so Rachel, like, give me children, at least I die. Like, she was fussing, but you know, she was serious. You see, because women understood the severity, they understood purpose, they understood legacy, they understood nation building. Okay, not this little silly shit that women are into today, you know. <laughs> the vanity that, that the majority of women are engulfed in today, you know, they do they they understood the severity, you know, of, of, of legacy and nation building. Okay. Now let's um go back. Let's get that in songs. You know, because that was, you know, and and when we go here to Psalms, okay, and you have to understand dealing with women, you know, their main purpose is to bear children, you know, be, you know, have mother, you know, and wife duties, you know, and it, it's a vital part, and, you know, and, and going into the kingdom when we all will be, you know, high born women. You know, we'll have, you know, particular duties of administration, you know, and overseeing the affairs of of, of the states. <laughs> you know, verse uh, this is Psalms one thirteen and nine. It says he make it the barren woman to keep house, okay. And like I say to keep house, you know, especially as we are going into the kingdom, you know, if the Israelite men are going to be kings and lords, you know, women. You know, would be the keeper of the states, you know, and be overseeing the domestic affairs of their house, man. Okay, <laughs> and it's gonna be with much joy because of the resources and the the, the, the handmaids and you know the, everything that we're gonna have to make the woman's job extremely efficient and joyful, you know, in the kingdom, man. All right, just speaking of times to come. So Psalms 113 and 9, it said he make it the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. You know, and it's in the woman's nature to be these things. Okay. You know, what Satan has corrupted, you know, the masses so much. The, 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 the majority of women, you know, want to be everything but that, you know, but you have, you know, that remnant of sisters that's, you know, getting back in their order. You know, it's, it's tapping back into their purpose, man. The, the, the mindset of their purpose, you know. Um, so let's go back to Tobit, chapter three. All right, this is the book of Tobit three and on um, fifteen. And it says, and that I never polluted my name, nor the name of my father in the land of my captivity. You know, I say she kept her virtue, you know, because that's a, a, a very uh, a shameful, you know, stain on a man's honor, you know, for a daughter not to be a virgin. It says, I am the, I am the only daughter of my father, neither have he any child to be his hair neither any near kinsman nor any son of his alive to whom i may keep myself for a wife my seven husbands are already dead and why should i die but if it please not thee that i should die command some regard to be had of me and pity taken of me that i hear no more reproach so the prayers of them were heard before the majesty of the great power. Okay? Let you know, look, those prayers pierced the clouds, you know? And the Lord will start to move just like even with um with Hannah. Okay. The Hananiah, which is the um the mother of Samuel, you know, when she prayed. You know, the Lord took heat, you know. 
If a brother can put that on the comment, if a brother can put that on the comment, boy, I think that's in Peter. Our Lord here to pray those of the righteous, you know. Let's get that. First uh, Samuel two. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh yeah. First Samuel chapter one verse ten. Now this is um the mother of Samuel. All right. It says, And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me. And not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man child. So she was specific. <laughs> you know, she requested a man child, you know, because that's, you know, uh, uh, that would be an heir, you know, to um, her husband, you know. <laughs> so she, she requested a, a man child. Said, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. All right, she made the, pretty much a Nazarene foul, you know, um, <laughs> for Samuel. It says, and it came to pass that she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. Now, Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, how long would thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the power of Israel grant thee thy petition, and thou uh, that thou hast asked of him and she said let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight so the woman went her way and did eat and her countenance was sad no more and they rose up in the morning early and worshiped the lord and returned and came to their house in ramah and elkanah knew hannah his wife and the lord remembered her okay and she conceived you know, and the Lord heard that sincere, you know, prayer, you know. So that, you know, Lord, we're going to say uh, a faith booster, you know, for, for everyone, you know, but especially, you know, you sisters that are sincere, you know, the Lord is hearing, you know, those prayers, man. You know, <laughs> the Lord is hearing, hearing those prayers. The thing is just to be patient and just keep doing the right thing, you know, keep doing what's required, you know. Um. So yeah, let's yeah, that's the precept. Could you put the um what verse in there, brother? I don't know what it's kind of I can't see what uh verse it is, brother. Yeah, we're gonna put both of them. Yeah. So, um, let's go back to all right. This is the brother Bayan Yashala, Proverbs fifteen and twenty nine. It said, "The Lord is far from the wicked, but He heareth the prayer 
of the righteous. Okay. <laughs> so the Lord is far from the wicked because see what well, Esau Edom, you know, is doing today. All right. And this time he's, he, he's, you know, trying to make a request for this NWO and it's going to be rejected. The Lord not dealing with this man and this NWO of wickedness, man. But said what? But he heareth the prayers of the righteous, man. And we just seen the counsel that, you know. So the prayers that we're sending up today, they're piercing the clouds. They're being heard, you know. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Why, the brother? This is um, the brother, a lot. All right, GMS, a lot. Yasha Allah, you know, Shalom. My First Peter three and twelve. It says, "For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous." And his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. <laughs> okay, so you see the same thing. Okay, so the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. All right, and what a feeling is going to be when the Lord, you know, start granting those prayers of the destruction of America, the deliverance, you know, of his people. Okay. The, the, the establishing of a righteous kingdom <laughs> you see the desire of our hearts like this that's what a joy that's going to be you know so let's get this in tobit and you know, finish it all right let's end it off okay it's the book of tobit All right, so verse 16 says, So the prayers of them both were heard before the majesty of the great power. And Raphael, you know, which goes into Rapa, uh, Rapa, Ya Allah, okay, healer of the Most High, you see, is the archangel. It says, And Raphael was sent to heal them both. That is to scale away the whiteness of Toby eyes, okay. And to give Sarah the daughter of Ragu for a wife to Tobias, the son of Tobit, and bind As Asmodeus, the evil spirit, because she belonged to Tobias by right of inheritance. The self same time came Tobit home and entered into his house, and Sarah, the daughter of Ragu, came down from the upper chamber. Okay? So the Lord heard both prayers and he's going to intertwine, all right, <laughs> and, and heal both of them, you know, and he's going to join two families, man, <laughs> okay? So this is it's also, you know, a, a faith booster to know that the Lord got all these things worked out, man, you know, in their due season, the Lord is going to answer you know, it's one thing when you do, when we do throw these prayers up, there's an aspect of faith, you know, that comes with it, you know, that the Lord is, you know, going to have answer, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and to heal them both, man. And as a nation, we're going to be healed. Let's get that, you know, as a nation, we're going to be healed. So let's get these. Let's get uh let's get that in in the book of Matthew chapter nine. You know. And the Holy Spirit has been sent, you know, as a healing for us. You know, this word, you know. So this is um Matthew nine and ten, it says it came to pass. As how I said at meet in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eat of your master with publicans and sinners? But when Yahweh heard it, heard that, he said unto them, They that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick. Okay. <laughs> so Yahweh Shai, you know, is the ultimate healer, 
and we're all being healed by Yahweh Shai. <laughs> okay, His word, you know, he, he, he comes in the volume of the book, you know, and His word is a healing. You know, we're healing from all type of trauma and and and, and you know, just broken spirits, confusion. You know, not knowing our purpose. You know, we're being healed. You know, low self esteem. You know, low self image. You know, we're being healed from all these things through this word, man. Okay. Or, or you know, pride, having, you know, <laughs> thinking too highly of yourself. You know, we're being healed from these things through the word. Okay. This is, um, Jeremiah 30 and 17 said, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, said the Lord Yahweh Bashim al Shah, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is I whom no man seeketh after. Okay? So we're being healed through this word, man. It was always a promise, you know, within prophecy that the Lord, you know, will restore health unto us, man. And it's an ongoing process until. You know we're changed okay let's end it here um well let's get this first <laughs> and so you know that this ministry is, is, is a great healing okay this is isaiah 60 1 and 1 it says the spirit of the lord powers upon me because the lord have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek he have sent me to bind up the broken heart, which is broken in the mind. Okay, to proclaim liberty to the captives. And we were spiritual, you know, we we're physical captives, you know, but our, our, our spirits and our minds was in captivity under this devil, man. You know, when we looked at everything only from a perspective he had created, man. See, this gospel is a perspective that Esau has no control over, man. This is a, the, the true gospel. True doctrine is a perspective that this devil has no control over, man. Okay, <laughs> so the truth has set us free, you know, as, as it says in the book of uh John 8 and 32, it, it set us free in the spirit, you know. Then a physical, all right, <laughs> release is coming that the, the physical freeing of the captives it says in the opening of the prison to them that are bound, okay, to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord and the day of vengeance of our power to comfort all that mourn okay so this is what's happening through what the preaching and his word is you no know, there's healing you know the the, the 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 lord giving us faith to believe all right and the gospel is a healing within itself it says to appoint unto them that mourn in zion to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and our joy comes from what? What's written? You know, we have a joy in these prophecies, a joy in the promises, you know, that the Lord gave us the faith to believe in. Okay? The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that it may be glorified. Okay? And it all comes through what? The preaching of the word all right let's get this in malachi and it's going to be completed you know at the coming okay of your house shot now this is malachi 4 and 2 says but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness which is your shot arise with healing in his wings because when you shot show up in those chariots we're going to be changed that's going to be us being completely healed and restored okay <laughs> And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stalls. Okay. <laughs> so just as you know, the Lord heard Tobit, you know, and, and, and Sarah, and sent Raphael, the angel of healing, you know, he's going to do it on a major scale with Yahweh Shah, man, the ultimate healer. <laughs> okay. So that was that. Uh, for the book of Tobit, the third chapter, you know, Lord will, you know, we continue on, you know, reading, you know, and, and uh, going through it and getting, you know, the spiritual nuggets, you know, from this book of Tobit, you know. So that was the point, you know, pray that you brothers, all right, and you sisters were edified once again, 
and give all praise on the glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushua, Bahashem, Kakodash, double honors unto the apostles and the elders, GMS, who rule well, teach well, being great, example towards younger brothers, and peace and blessings, and salutations, and hopefully, shalom.